everyone. I'm absolutely delighted today to be here with a very good friend of mine, Andy Shaw. I'm Nicola Cairn Cross and I met Andy back in the early 2000s and we've been friends ever since. And today I'm really privileged to be able to interview him and find out a little bit more about what's been happening with him over the last few years. So welcome Andy to the interview. Hi Nicola. Um, so you, yes again? Yes again, <laughs> yes. Um, can we start off by telling everyone a bit about your background, just sure. a, bit of a bit of a life history, as short as possible? Short as possible, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I uh, started off, uh, my uncle uh, told me I was going to be rich and make a lot of money when I was the age of 13, and uh, so I left the room knowing that I was going to go out and go into the business world. He uh, sort of lost my way a bit, uh, went through the usual teenage years, went and became an apprentice and then all of a sudden just fell into a business after getting sacked from so many companies, leaving so many companies and that sort of thing. And the first the recession of the 1990s yeah. sort of like spurred me off into going to start my own business. Uh, set that up, uh, built it up over seven or eight years to having over 100, well over 100 employees, uh, three or four factories, something like that, and countless bands and machinery and mm, I've heard some of your funny stories about those days yeah, pain beyond belief basically you know we, we were turning over about seven million uh, but it was two uh, percent net margin so oh, you know that's not good I don't know that somebody in somebody in America sneezed and that was it our business was in trouble right. so it was it was, a, it was just a, a hell on earth uh, and then one day I was at lunch with a business with our business mentor and he said to me uh, I was coming up with yet another idea for a production line, and mm. I've, I've been in production for years, and I, mm. I knew production backwards, and uh, so I, I thought, right, well, I'll just create another production line, and one of the, sooner or later, one of them will work, and it'll start to spit out money, and of course, it wasn't going to be like that, because the industry we were in was, was a horrible industry, and uh, so anyway, I sat there, and I said, right, well, we'll come up with this production line, and my business mentor said, he said, Andy, your ideas are great, he said, but they all lack one thing, money, so... Yeah, what did he mean exactly? Well, you have to have money to invest in something oh, like I a see. production line, yeah. whereas, you know, the businesses we're involved in, you know, you can start it up with... An idea. <laughs> yeah, an idea, user, yeah. $10, see if people like it, and yeah. you're off. But with something like that, you have to spend thirty, forty thousand 40000 before, a uh, minimum, before mm. you see if anybody's interested, and then it can take you two, three, four years to recover the initial capital outlay. So, anyway, you know, I, I just turned to him and I went, oh, that's all right, I'll, I'll go and make us some money then. Uh, and it was just like a, a switch went off in my mind that said, that's how I'm going to go and make money. And I went away, and, you know, after they laughed at me, obviously, mm, yeah. uh, I went away, came back here, and I, I sat back, and I thought, well, okay, yeah, how do I get rich then? Uh, like Sunday Times Rich List was on the TV, so I thought, I'll go and buy that. And I went out and bought it, and I sat back, and I went through it and worked out that 70% of the people in there either made their money from or held their money in property. And so I looked at my own life, and I thought, well, actually, the you know, the bits of money that I've made and held on to mm. are all stuck in property. You know, you know, we all go through money and that sort of thing. But the bits I'd actually created lumps of equity were mm. sitting in property. I thought, okay, let's evaluate the property market. That'll do. I'll do that one then. <laughs> uh, sat back, uh, spent eight weeks analysing it, you know, on mm. a bit of an analyst. Yeah. And uh, worked out that the property market was significantly undervalued, uh, or at least significantly undervalued in this due, area, in this area yeah. due, for a, due for a massive lift. Uh, went and told everybody about it uh, at our boardroom meeting. I, I can't remember how it ever were our external auditors and accountants, something like that. Basically, they all thought I was nuts. Uh, came back to came back home, and my wife said, "Well, what did everybody say when you said that we should go and invest mm -hmm. in property?" Uh, I said they all said I was nuts, and uh, <laughs> the property market wasn't overvalued at all because all the people on the TV were You've saying been talking that it was, about a bubble for yeah, ages, exactly. haven't they? Yeah. Um, and, you know, I was at the turning point, and my wife, actually, uh, it was Alison that, you know, convinced me that, I said, well, what do you think? She said, uh, take everything we got and do it. Wow, that's brave, it isn't was, it, for yeah, a wife was, with was, kids, yeah, little exactly. kids too. Oh, she was very heavily pregnant at the time. Oh, right. And um, so we just went, oh, okay, uh, let's go and do it. And I just went off. First day, I think I made about £200,000 or something like that, and, you know, it was just, it was mind-boggling. Uh, and I set myself this goal uh, of being a millionaire within uh, two years. Mm. And I achieved millionaire within about six months and a couple of weeks later, multi-millionaire. And it was just... We're talking about the equity and the properties that you bought yeah. under value. Yeah. I was, it, was, it was a case of the equity lift was massive. Mm. What I hadn't realised was there was also a massive cash lift, uh, cash chuck out as well. Yeah. Just, these things just spat out cash like there was no tomorrow. 